The 805 Focus is brought to you in part by Nonprofit Connect. Nonprofit Connect provides superior leadership tools and resources so nonprofit leaders and board members can make valuable decisions to move their organization forward to a sustainable and vibrant future. More information on services online at nonprofitconnect.org. Welcome to 805 Focus. I'm Dr. Cinder Sinclair with Nonprofit Connect, and we will be bringing you the latest on your favorite nonprofits. So get ready to be inspired. Our special guest today is Dr. Steve Windhager, and Steve is the Executive Director of the Santa Barbara Botanic Garden. Welcome, Steve. Thank you, Cinder. Thank you for having me. I'm so love to be here. I'm so glad that you were able to, to make it today. You are a busy guy. You have a lot going on at the garden. Indeed, there's a lot going on. And of course, it's spring right now in the garden, and it's looking incredible. Oh, gosh. Uh, it's uh, going to be our, we have uh, peak visitation almost every day. And uh, we have some new projects that are just around the corner. So beginning in uh, June of 2022, we'll be opening the new Backcountry exhibit which is a space for kids to climb logs and uh, climb uh, down stones and rocks and explore the, the back country, much the way that we did as kids for many of us, yeah. uh, hopefully to inspire the next generation of conservationists. But too often nowadays, kids uh, spend all their time on, on the screens, oh. playing video games, or if they go outside at best, they're playing uh, organized sports. Yeah. You don't have the chance to invent your own games, to use your make-believe, and just discover the natural world. So this is a space where children and families can do that together. That is beautiful. And I, and I love the idea of creating the next generation of conservationists. You know, most of us came to become uh, conservationists because we had a, a deep and abiding, we, we've, we've discovered the outdoors and developed a deep and abiding love. And we all know that you care for and you protect what you love. Uh, so if you don't ever discover that, chances are you won't be there for nature in the future. So this makes sure that we have a way to uh, generate that same interest and passion for the natural world in the next generation. Gosh, so Steve, so tell me um, a little bit about the Botanic Garden, how big it is, how long it's been there, it's just an incredible place. Well, the garden just turned 96 years old. So we were founded yeah. in 1926, uh, and we have you know, been in Mission Canyon ever since that time. We're now 78 acres. We've grown over time as we've been able to acquire some additional properties. We started off as only 13 acres. So it's, it's been a number of growth spurts over the years. Uh, we have gardens on both sides of Mission Canyon Road and uh, over five miles of trails. And so there's really an opportunity to uh, get lost and discover yourself uh, at the Botanic Garden. <laughs> okay, so visitors, tell me about the number of visitors. You said something about peak visitors, but tell me what that means. So um, we do have some limitations about how many people can visit at any one time and mm -hmm. over the entire course of the year. During COVID, uh, we were able to get an extension from the county because while all the other museums in town were closed, unfortunately, uh, unfortunate for them, Fortunately for us, being an outside venue, mm -hmm. more people were able to visit us. And so last year we had 120,000 people visit the garden. Uh, wow. Normally our limit is around 110,000. And so uh, we're gonna be scaling back from where we were last year, but it, it's a really exciting time to be at the garden. Things are really developing uh, beautifully. Not only do we have these incredible programs on the garden grounds, we also have a lot of programs uh, where we're going out into the community. So in addition to, we have a, a, a conservation and research staff of over 23 staff members now with wow. uh, seven PhDs on staff. And they are working up and down the Central Coast to ensure that uh, native plants and the native biodiversity of our ecosystems uh, stay healthy. And so we're working with managers at the National Park Service, the Department of Defense, the Forest Service, the Bureau of Land Management. We're working with all these folks to help them better manage their landscapes to preserve native plants, which of course, at the root, that's what all biodiversity is based on, 
it, from the insects and the pollinators all the way up to the grizzly bear. <laughs> so when you say go out to the community, you're talking about these agencies? Well, that's the first start of it, but we're also working increasingly, we're working with Mesa Harmony Gardens, with City College and other folks oh, okay. about how to bring in more native plants into their areas so they can either promote pollination services for their vegetable gardening, how they can promote biodiversity in their own backyards. We have a big push that's be coming out to help everybody start gardening in their own backyards with more native plants to promote more biodiversity and ensure that we have uh, all the birds, butterflies, and, and bees that we want so that we can ensure that we have the healthy ecosystem that we need to get through the climate change that we're all facing. Okay, so that's going to help with the climate change. Well, it helps ensure that the species can live through climate change. Oh. Of course, planting any plant is a way to pull carbon out of the atmosphere uh -huh. and put it into the soil, and that's an important first step. But while any plant can do that, not every plant can also support the birds and butterflies that it needs. Mm. Some plants, if they've come from another continent, they really don't have the ability to provide uh. our local insects and our local birds oh. the food and habitat that they need in order to live. And so it's making sure that we have the right plants for the right critters is how to make sure we have the biodiversity we need to get through this. Climate change has been tough on all species, not just humans, um, so that they are having challenges with finding the right food sources, mm. finding the right nesting sources. Mm. Uh, we've heard about that with some of, uh, with monarch butterflies. We've heard about the issues that bees are having increasingly mm -hmm. across the nation. Mm -hmm. So all those things really, uh, are compounded by climate change. But if we are able to help these insects, help these birds be able to find the food and resources they need, then uh, everything else gets easier for them. So this is a way to help them make it through climate change. Yeah, and so to do that at the garden is one thing, it's a huge thing, but to go out into the community and encourage just the average person to, first of all, learn what it means to the, the biodiversity and the native plants to learn what that is how do you where do you get them why is it important and to encourage that that's a ripple effect you huh? bet so we want we have both a, a nursery that's open uh, any day the garden's open our nursery is open so you can come get your native plants here at the garden all right um, we teach you how to plant those plants and how many of our plants are adapted to a, a summer dry and a winter wet season. Mm. So they're expecting to live through the nine months of drought that we have in California every year. And sometimes if you, uh, through uh, your love of those plants, you'll oftentimes overwater them oh. and kill them in the summertime. <laughs> and so we teach people what the right watering uh, regimes are so that they can both conserve water and ensure their plants are healthy and happy. Uh, and provide those benefits. So we teach people how to use plants, what plants go where, how they can use them best in their best garden. They can take those plants home with them and get them planted and start their own backyard habitat to support all of nature's beauty. Wow, good thing you have all those PhDs. Yeah, well, you I, sure, I, that's quite the science. Well, and it, there's a lot of science to it, but the truth is it doesn't take a PhD to do this. <laughs> uh, it, it takes just a, a love of the natural world mm -hmm. and a willingness to discover and start being a, a part of the, the solution in your own backyard. So um, I would imagine you use a lot of volunteers. That's true. We have lots of opportunities to volunteer in every aspect of the garden grounds. You can be part of our rare plant seed program Well, you'll be helping us clean seed that we've collected from all over California before it goes into our seed bank, which is the, a long-term storage, cryogenic storage for those seeds against catastrophe in the wild. So if a, a disaster happens, we have those seeds in the, in the seed bank and we can bring them back out. Volunteers help us clean those seeds before they go into the cryogenic storage. But we also have opportunities to be a docent. You can be a, a guest host where you're just greeting people coming in, helping them understand what is going on at the garden that day and, and finding their way around. We have volunteers that work in the garden grounds themselves alongside our gardeners. Uh, we have uh, educating, education volunteers that are working in the, the back country, our new children's er area, as well as uh, in other aspects of the garden. So, uh, if you want to work on computer stuff, we have a whole oral history team that's gathering information about uh -huh. the 96 years of garden history. Gosh. So there's something for everybody. So if you want to have a chance to volunteer, both be outside or be inside, we have something for you. That sounds great. So a person could probably go on your website and they could find out about how to be a volunteer and look at all the different 
categories and you may even do like a little training or something for every every volunteer gets training and they come in and they'll start off with an interview where our uh, uh, our volunteer uh, program manager would sit down with them and talk about what they're most interested in what they're what they want to learn what they already know and we find the right position just oh, for gosh. them and then of course they get training on site uh, we don't expect anyone to know what they're doing before they get there some people do and that's great uh, but folks that don't, we'll provide all the training and get them started right away with however much or as little time as they can spare. That is great. So while, they're, while a person is on your website looking at volunteer opportunities, they could, I bet you also have a donate now button because you are a 501c3 That's nonprofit. Right. Uh, so uh, again, our website is sbbg.org and it is where you want to go to find out all the information about what's going on at the garden. You can make a donation, you can become a volunteer, uh, and beginning the spring, it's also a way to make a reservation to make sure that you're able to get into the garden. Oh. Because increasingly, we have more visitors than we can accommodate in the garden grounds, and so you ah. have to have a reservation. You don't have to have a reservation, but you, we encourage it, yeah. so you can make sure that you get in when you do visit. So do you also have memberships? We do have memberships, and so, so our members, also on the our members don't have to have a reservation. So that's another way to uh, get in. Uh, but it is always encouraged if you want to just make darn sure you can get into the garden when you want to visit, make that reservation. Gosh. So do you think that a person really can see all the garden in one visit, uh, one day, I mean? In a day, for sure. Uh, and again, the, what's wonderful about the Botanic Garden is that while we do have snacks and some other little things available in our gift store, you can bring in a full picnic, oh. you can bring in all the food and beverage you want, oh, and wow. make a day at the garden. And it really does take a number of hours to see everything and really experience yeah, it. I would think so. It's so big and so beautiful. You want to see everything. And now with this new exhibit, yep. I can see those kids just going crazy. Everybody probably, but certainly the kids. My hope is that families will want to come to the garden every weekend or every, every some day of the week. Parents will be able to sit down in some very comfortable areas, a place we're calling base camp, and uh, they get to hang out there and their kids get to run and play and do what kids do. They're going to be within earshot, but probably out of eyesight, and uh -huh. it gives them a chance to develop and, and grow a little bit. But I can imagine that over time, you'll see that families come every Saturday, every mm. Sunday morning, or whatever. And that regularity means that the other families are also coming during those same time periods. Yeah. And as a result, they, you develop cliques and friendships, and, and you get to know each other. And that's just what we do. Sunday is at the garden. That's great. And so, we, just before, we, we were talking about, you were telling me a story about how uh, the kids who... Yeah. You were worried about them using the cell phones? Well, we were worried, uh, so as we started thinking about the, the new children's area, the back country, we wanted to, a lot of our trustees were worried that we need to make this a cell phone free zone. So yes, that, make some rules. You know, make some rules. We don't <laughs> want kids playing on their phones while they're out here. We want them to explore nature. Uh, so we did a little test. So in tw 2019, we had a program called Garden Casitas, and these were playhouses designed with nature in mind. And we put them in the area where the back country was going to be, and these were just temporary exhibits. Um, and uh, we both were able to verify that was this area, which is a little bit of a walk from the main entrance, is it too far for, for parents and kids? Mm -hmm. And it wasn't. And we also wanted to test what, what sort of rules we were going to need. Mm -hmm. And what I saw was a number of occasions kids handing their phones to their parents because they actually, I heard them say, I need both hands free. <laughs> now, they wanted their parent to have the phone because, of course, they wanted some photos to document their oh, visit. Oh, of course, of course. That's um, great. <laughs> but, you know, they, even the kids wanted something to put on Instagram. But uh, it was amazing that this was uh, being out in the natural world, being able to climb a tree, being able to climb on these cool rocks and other things. This is novel now in a way that was commonplace for me. Yeah. It's no longer the norm. They can play with their phone anytime. And so what we discovered is that this is a really novel, interesting experience that each of these kids wants to have again. Gosh. <laughs> and so do you get to spend very much time yourself walking the garden? Not as much as I want to. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, we are also, I should say, we still have a half million dollars to raise towards our $4 million goal for the back country. So again, oh. you can go to our website and make that donation there. But um, mo most of the time when I'm getting out in the garden ground, sometimes it's because I'm giving someone a tour. Oh. Uh, and I don't get out enough for myself. But uh, I think once the backcountry is in, in, in place, 
I imagine that I'll be out there more often than, than not. Yeah. And if you're ever missing me, you're going to find me in the fallen forest racing kids to the top of the trees. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So um, now, talking about COVID and the, uh, oh, the challenges and the flexibility you had to have and all, and the, the new sort of partnerships or alliances that, that resulted from that, Maybe you could talk a little bit about that. So uh, we're lucky enough here in Santa Barbara that we have an incredibly close museum community and we all help each other out. So early on in the pandemic when none of us knew what, what this was, what was in store for us, in fact, we had all been shut down, um, we worked together to get a, uh, with all the Santa Barbara County Museums, um, to get a small grant to get us all iPads and other filming equipment. In fact, we worked with TVSB who helped us identify, that trained us how to use this equipment <laughs> and got us all working in concert. So we figured out how to get more resources up electronically, get it out on the web, because so many of us are used to in-person meetings and we weren't doing those anymore. Um, uh, over time, that partnership has continued to evolve and develop. You know, we still meet every month via Zoom. Uh, and have a conversation about whatever is going on at the day. And that evolved into a program that we now have called the Environmental Alliance for Santa Barbara County Museums. The Environmental Alliance is 14 different museums spread out throughout mm -hmm. Santa Barbara County that are all working together to communicate messages about climate change or other environmental concerns. This year in 2022, we have a joint uh, program where all 14 museums are doing something about climate change. Wow. And it's called Im uh, Impact, the urgency of, of dealing with climate change now. Uh, and so the urgency of now is all about how do we, so when you come to the Botanic Garden, you're gonna see themes about how planting native trees will help mm -hmm. with biodiversity and help with mitigating the heat island effect. Yeah. You can see things uh, uh, about what you can do to help address climate change. You're also gonna see exhibits at the Natural History Museum. You'll see exhibits at um, the zoo, at the Maritime Museum. And so we're all telling some of the same stories so that you get it from, it's all about climate change, but you get different perspectives yeah, yeah, on yeah. all those messages. And it doesn't matter whether you're going out into uh, Solvang, you'll be able to see the s exhibits at the Wilding Museum. Uh -huh. uh, so we're all across the county, you're seeing partners that are doing this. Uh, whether you go to Elverhoy, there'll be messages there too. And so the hope is that by joining together and taking the same topic, but seeing it from different perspectives yeah. will better get the message out. It's because the truth is, we have to work on addressing climate change. We have to do this as a community. We have to do this as a culture. The time is now. The time was yesterday. Yeah. But as they say, the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The next best time is today. Oh my gosh, I like that. Wow, that is quite an accomplishment. I mean, really, how do they say lemonade out of lemons? Because this is now a, a collaboration and alliance that will serve you well into the future. That's right. This is the first year we're doing this, but it's not going to be the last. Yeah. Our goal is to, to make this part of what we do. And it, and it also supports our community in the sense that uh, many people will be communicating out to beyond Santa Barbara. We're bringing in more tourism dollars. Uh, where people are coming in, staying overnight because they don't want to just come to the Botanic Garden. They have to also see the exhibit at the Maritime Museum and have yep, to go yep, into Solvang yep. to see what's going on there. So there's opportunities uh, that I think that will have a ripple effect that's larger. But again, hopefully at the end of the day, they're leaving knowing what they can do to help address climate change yep. and uh, start making a difference today. Good for you. Okay, so Steve, we have a minute or so left. Is there another message you'd like for our listeners to know? I think just to, to know that the Botanic Garden is more than a pretty place. <laughs> uh, we are a beautiful place. I hope that you come more than just in April uh, to come to the Botanic Garden, and, and but come enjoy the garden, experience it. But know that the garden is going beyond the garden boundaries. We're going to be able to help you with uh, figuring out what plants need to go in your own backyard, but also that we're working to make sure that our all, all of our public lands, the lands that are in the national parks, the national forests, the, the, city, the, the community parks, all those are being better managed to promote yeah. biological diversity, and that's a big part of what we do. Yeah, so let's hope. And you're constantly adding new things, and so people need to come there often Otherwise, well, they're going to be left in the dust. That's right. There's a, nature is not static, so it's always changing. There's always something new to see at the Botanic Garden. Gosh. Well, and good luck with your capital campaign. 
Sounds like uh, we're very close. Yeah, sounds like you are. Only half a million left. Yeah, a little bit of help from the rest of the community will be over the top. Yeah, a whole bunch of gifts, whether they're small or large. Everything matters. Everyone matters. matters. Yes. Oh, gosh. Well, thank you so much for all this really important work that you're doing. Center is always a pleasure. All of us. Always a pleasure to come visit with you. All righty. And thank you for joining us on 805 Focus, and we'll see you next time.